Def Leppard frontman Joe Elliott is calling out Testament's Chuck Billy and former Wasp guitarist Chris Holmes for accusing his band of relying heavily on backing tracks during their performance. Now, this has been a long held controversy in music, hotly debated by people who are very much traditionalist. They want live shows to be 100% live. And those who are either overly reliant on the technology, and there are definitely people who are doing that, and then also those who are maybe enhancing their performances using all available technology. What it really comes down to is how it's applied in music. Some have less of a problem with effects as long as it's tastefully done. And then of course there are those examples where they're obviously overly reliant on those backing tracks. How you feel falls somewhere in between and of course everybody is entitled to their opinions. But Joe Elliott really did take issue with this and he goes into some depth about how they handle their performances. And I'm really curious to hear how you all feel about this as always. First, I wanna show you what Chuck Billy had to say originally about this. And he, in my opinion, wasn't even really being harsh about this. He was just kind of stating his opinion. I would say that a number of people have felt as if Def Leppard was using or overly reliant on backing tracks, by the way, Elliot does not deny that they use backing tracks during their performance. And it's also totally fair to say that a massive majority number of live acts that are prominent in music are probably in some form or another using backing tracks during their live show. There is a major difference between backing tracks and downright lip syncing. Lip syncing would involve the artist just miming to pre-recorded audio. That also has happened, and that probably still happens to this day, and that is something that's going to be way more controversial with the fans. And I think it's less controversial, but still very controversial with fans for artists who maybe use potentially vocal layering behind them to strengthen their voice when you're going out there performing day in and day out and musicians voices naturally have the tendency to break down i think it can be easy to kind of lean into that technology and then there are people who take a lot of pride understandably in the fact that they're going out there and they're doing it 100 percent live and i respect all points of views in this and really there's no right or wrong answer it comes down to what the artist wants to do and especially what you, the fans, are willing to tolerate. I would love to hear your perspective on this, but it seems like every time new technology has been introduced, there's been some discussion about whether or not it's controversial. I think it's fair to say that even with the invention of the synthesizer, this was hotly debated about whether or not it's legitimate to incorporate that into your live show. And as I mentioned, the way recording has evolved, it just comes down to how each and every one of you feel. So this is what Chuck Billy had to say at the time about Def Leppard's live show. So this is from November of last year. It's comments that Chuck Billy made. I think he was nuanced in this. I don't think he was disrespectful, but it's clear from Joe Elliott's response that this didn't really sit right with him. Again, Chuck Billy's an absolute legend. And I think that I have no issue with what he had to say here. He was simply expressing his opinion, but uh, let's take a look at what he had to say. So this is from Ultimate Guitar, and Chuck Billy was conducting an interview with Sink and Stanley in which he was asked about his opinion on live bands using backing tracks. So as you can see, he says, that's not my thing, and he goes on to be transparent. He goes, so I'm sure I'm much uglier and nastier looking when I'm singing live than in a video you see on MTV somewhere out there. I guess there are bands out there that probably need help. He goes on to continue. I know there's bands like Def Leppard that use a lot of backing tracks, but that's also backing tracks for that big sound. Cause obviously you can't get all their voices live unless you brought in a choir. So there's an exception to that rule. I don't have a problem with anything he said there. In some ways he was complimentary and there is an argument to be made that if your music features an orchestra, you're probably gonna have to do that in today's economy, digitally or using technology, because it's just not really possible for a lot of bands to be able to do that. And then of course, from Def Leppard's perspective, if you listen to their music, there are a ton of layers in their recordings. So as he points out there, it's reasonable for them to maybe put in some backing tracks there just to give it as close to a live feel as you can. Now, Chuck Billy is far from the first person to suggest that Def Leppard are using a lot of tracks during their live performance. So let's take a look at what former Wasp guitarist Chris Holmes had to say about the subject as well. So this was something else that didn't sit well with Joe Elliott, which he mentions. And 
Chris Holmes was participating in a Q&A in June of last year when he specifically mentioned both Def Leppard and Motley Crue allegedly using backing tracks. He said, if you pay to see a real gig, it should be real, whether they sound good or like crap. That's the way I look at it. I don't sample, I never will. I would rather play when I'm a little bit off, but it's for real. Some people would rather do it. I heard Motley Crue is doing it. Def Leppard has to sample. He said, if you pay to see a real gig, it should be real, whether they sound good or like crap. That's the way I look at it. I don't sample, I never will. I would rather play when I'm a little bit off, but it's for real. Some people would rather do it. I heard Motley Crue is doing it. Def Leppard has to sample. You can't do them eight part harmonies on the vocals unless you have other people singing in the background. Now in the past, Def Leppard's Phil Collin has actually responded to this, denying that the band used backing tracks at all. This is what he had to say back then. So this is from back in 2019. Phil Collin explains how Def Leppard uses backing tracks. And the article says, after drummer Rick Allen lost an arm in a 1985 accident, sequencers and a mix of real and electronic drums allowed the band to continue with the same lineup. Since then, Def Leppard has buoyed its live sound with other backtracked elements. It's never been a secret. So after Motley Crue bassist Nikki Six called out a certain band, which people thought were referencing Kiss, for purporting to be 100% real while backtracking lead vocals, Def Leppard guitarist Phil Collin is explaining why he doesn't think his band's use of tracks is problematic. Again, this is something that is constantly debated. So speaking to Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon in a new interview, he said, I mean, we've always used keyboard things and parts of a drum loop, like on Rocket. You couldn't really play that part live. And so we've used stuff like that. He goes on to say, our vocals are always live and that's the big difference. We're like a live vocal band and that's something that's a lot of the other bands don't do. So even he's saying there that there are a ton of bands that are not authentically singing live. And I don't think there's really any debate about that. There are a lot of people that have large amounts of vocal layering, but he says these kind of, they kind of fake the vocals and it's not really them, but this is really us, it's real. The vocals are real. Everything's totally 100% real. So that's what Phil Collins said back then. What's Joe Elliott saying now? He just opened up on this subject and gave a very in-depth response in this brand new interview with Stereo Gum, which I've linked to in the description. They cover a lot of ground in this interview. And one of the things the interviewer asked him was about their live show and how it feels very polished. And from there, Elliott goes into these allegations of the band being overly reliant on backing tracks. The interviewer said, I had a chance to catch Def Leppard on tour two years ago and was blown away by the high quality of your live set. They put on a great show. Uh, it was so polished and at the same time, loose and fun. How important is it to you all these years into your career that you give your audience the best possible Def Leppard experience? And so Elliot goes uh, a lot. The truth of the matter is, when you've been around as long as we have, 90% of the audience are coming to hear the stuff they know rather than to be educated with, say, a new album that you or the Rolling Stones or Paul McCartney just released. He's, he's absolutely spot on. As much as we're glad that Hackney Diamonds is out there, at the end of the day, most people are buying a ticket for the Rolling Stones. They're going to gladly hear angry and sweet sounds of heaven because they're great songs, but they also want Start Me Up, Satisfaction, You Can't Always Get What You Want. Uh, they're coming, I don't want to say for the nostalgia, but they're coming for the entertainment rather than the education of it. It's the same with us. So here's where he directly responds to Chuck from Testament and Chris Holmes. He said, I liked your analogy about our live show being polished but loose. That's the perfect blend, really. You want people to hear it and go, my God, they're tight, but you can tell there's a difference between the live and the record. I don't normally comment on this kind of stuff, but a friend of mine just sent me some link to something on YouTube, a recent posting by I forgive me, I don't know his name, Chuck something from Testament, I think it is, and Chris Holmes accusing us of using backing tracks. I don't get angry at this. I'm flattered because their standards must be very different to ours. For anybody that thinks we use backing tracks, it must mean they hear us. They can't believe how good it is for real. He says, the fact is that if you rehearse the way we do and you're as talented as the band are as musicians, then maybe you would believe it. I'd be happy to invite any of those guys to come uh, stand side stage with a pair of headphones on so they could actually hear what's coming out of the stage. We don't use backing tracks. We use effects. God, who wouldn't? When there's four people singing, we use effects. There's no tapes or backing vocals. We use keyboards. We use a few drum loops because in fairness, two-arm drummers use drum loops. But Rick Allen 
to play a song like Rocket, it's a cacophony of toms that one arm couldn't play. So yeah, we use a triggered loop, which is part of his drum kick, but Larry Mullen's been doing that for years. So had thousands of other drummers to enhance the sound, but backing tracks are playing along to a backing track. We've never done that, never. We've never mimed to the vocals or we've never had multiple stuff on tape. It's literally live. If we're running at about 90%, it's more than most people's 100% because we do play and sing. It does take a toll. You can say play Denver where it's a mile above sea level. And if you got a gig the next day, your voice is going to be pretty shot. We have to get to a level where if it's a little under last night, it's still acceptable to the audience because of the adrenaline and the fact that it's live and you can hear maybe a bit of hoarseness or somebody's finger slip because it's so cold. They can't keep their fingers on the strings. Things like that happen to every single band, and that's what brings the humanity to it. But we're very proud of the fact that we play live and we sing live and we don't use tapes. Sorry, so sorry, Chuck and Chris Holmes, but you've got that one completely wrong, but thanks for thinking that we need them. We don't, we're that good. Joe Elliott, ladies and gentlemen, a very interesting response there from him, and he's explaining that they're using effects. So is it possible to use a vocal doubler, do those things exist? Yes, they do. There are effects that can produce a choir effect that doesn't mean that you know we can get to a certain level where we're kind of splitting hairs about this. In my opinion, what the most important factor is, is whether or not the fans who spent their hard earned money walk away from the show. And it's one simple question. Did you enjoy the performance? If the answer is yes, then I think we're kind of splitting hairs, but the real answer to this question is what do the fans want to see? And the good news is I think the fans are always going to want to see the musicians singing. Actually, I think the fans are always going to want to see the musicians playing their instruments. I don't think they're necessarily going to freak out if there's some backing tracks, but if you try to push further than that, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of people who may go see the kiss avatar show, but I think it's a different demographic than people like me who go to several shows a week and really want to see the actual songwriters and performers who made the music that I enjoy actually play it live on stage. But if I sense that they're using backing tracks, sometimes you can definitely tell if it's done in a distasteful way and that's disappointing, but I don't have a problem with somebody putting choir effects in or you know, in the case of like falling in reverse, they're rapping over a hip hop beat and you've got to use a computer to incorporate that into your live show. I have absolutely no issue with that. Bands have been doing that for decades now. And it's just one of those things. What are the fans going to accept? This is totally not a new debate. I just think that as all of us are becoming more aware of technology, we're going to look at things in a different way. But as always, let me know what you think down in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button for the latest news and updates right here at Rockfeed.